Hey everybody, this is graphing absolute value function, section 9.2. Um, the do now, all they're asking us to do is label the following as linear or quadratic. Remember, linear functions make straight lines. Quadratic functions make those parabolas that we worked with last week. So we have quadratic, linear, linear and quadratic your first quadratic is positive your first linear from left to right goes up so that one's positive uh, from left to right goes down is negative and you have your frowny parabola which is negative as well Vocabulary terms. Feel free to pause, you know, when I reveal the definition, if you need to take your time to write out the definition. Absolute value. A number's distance away from zero. Always positive. Always, always positive. Okay, so, for example, if you have the absolute value of three, well, the number three is three spaces away from zero. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. However, if I had the absolute value of negative 3, well, negative 3 is still 3 spaces away from 0. So your answer would be positive 3. And that works for pretty much every single number. If you had the absolute value of negative, you know, 105, well, that would be 105. So this is just to show you how to type it in the calculator. You hit the math button and you hit abs for absolute value and then it should pop up uh, just like this in your calculator and then instead of putting X, you could put whichever number you need inside. A translation, we're gonna be talking about that in terms of these graphs. That's a shift of a graph that is the same size as the original. A shift of a graph that is the same size as the original. We're going to see a few of those. Identifying translations. Identify each pair of figures as a translation or not a translation. Well, remember, translation is what? A shift of a graph that is the same size. If you look at your first example, from shape 1 to shape 2, it gets smaller. So this is not... from shape one to shape two, it just looks like it slid over. Like we literally took that heart and slid it across the desk and moved it somewhere else. So that is a translation. And again, shape one to shape two, it preserves the size. It's just sort of reflected, right? But we can translate that. So that's a translation. The absolute value function has a V-shaped graph. So instead of our U-shaped parabolas, these make a V-shape. They come to a very sharp turning point. It either opens upward, right, which would be positive, or it opens downward, which is negative. Below is the graph of Y equals the absolute value of X and the graph of another absolute value function. How are the graphs related? The two graphs have the same or different shape. Well, if you take a look, they're both V-shaped. So that would be the same. The second graph is translated up or down from the original. Well, if you take a look, that vertex or that turning point of this absolute value function is right at zero. But the turning point of the second graph is up one, two, three, four at four. So that's translated up. So complete the equation using the number of units the graph is translated. Well, we said it was up 4. So this should be y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. So your number on the outside of your absolute value function determines the starting point up or down. 
Now we're going to look at if the constant is on the inside of your absolute value function like this minus 5. So all we need to do is a little math. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So this is really the absolute value of negative 5, which we said is 5 spaces away from 0. So that answer is 5. Then you have the absolute value of 2 minus 5, which is really the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3 spaces away from 0. 5 minus 5 is 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. 8 minus 5 is 3, so the absolute value of 3 is 3. And 10 minus 5 is 5, the absolute value of 5 is 5. So all we need to do is plot these points, 0, 5, 2, 3, 5, 0, 8, 3, and 10, 5. 0, 5, between 4 and 6. 2, 3, right? 2, up 3. 5, 0, right? 5, up 0. 8, 3, right? 8, up 3. And 10, 5, right? 10, up 5. So here's your absolute value function. Here's your V shaped graph. And what happened? Instead of moving, like in the last question, where we started at 0 and the plus 4 moved us up 4, this time we had a minus 5 on the inside and we started to the right. 5. So your values on the inside, if it's negative, means right 5. Whereas if we had a positive x plus 5, this would have meant, instead of right, it would have meant left. Whereas for this example, we had x plus 4 on the outside, and then up. And if we had y equals the absolute value of x minus 4, well, that would have meant down. So with the more practice uh, you get with absolute value functions, all you're going to have to do is look at the function itself, and you won't even need to complete a table like this. Uh, once you, know, you do more repetitions of these, it's going to be a little more evident. For example, if you take a look here, I have a plus 2 on the outside of my absolute value function. Well, those were inside. And here's your outsides. We said a plus 4 on the outside meant up 4. Well, what do we think a plus 2 is going to mean? Up 2. And there it is. The great part about absolute value functions is if this x is plain or, you know, there's no coefficient with it, that you're going to go on the corners all the way through the graph. But remember, absolute value functions make a V, so your turning point is going to swing back around. And there is y equals the absolute value of x plus 2. Now this time you have a plus 2 on the inside. So let's go back to the examples where we had uh, terms on the inside of the absolute value, like number 3. Plus 5 on the inside right here, we said was left. 5. This time we have plus 2, which means left 2 from the origin. Put your point left 2 from the origin. And like we said, x doesn't have a coefficient, 
which means corners in both directions. Make sure you complete them all the way through the graph. New York State on your Regents exam needs you to plot all of the points that can fit within the given graph. And there it is. Y equals the absolute value of X plus 2. Your exit slip. A student is graphing the equation Y equals the absolute value of X minus 10. Complete the table to find the values of the correct graph. Well, 0 minus 10 is negative 10. But the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. 5 minus 10 is negative 5. And the absolute value of that is 5. 10 minus 10 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. 12 minus 10 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. Negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. The graph uh, below shows the student's incorrect translation. Now plot the points from the table and compare. So this student messed up uh, their example on the graph. 0, 10 is right here. So that looks okay. 5, 5 though. Right 5, up 5. It's about right here. 10, 0. Right 10, over 0. 12, 2. Right 12, up 2. Negative 2, 12. Left 2, up 12. It's about right here. So here is your absolute value. So what was the student's error? They started left how many? 10, when they were supposed to start right 10. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you need any help, feel free to reach out, email, Google Voice, you know the deal. Have a good one.